Okay, we start our uh, discussion on uh, uh, semiconductor device physics and today we will discuss the topics that we discuss will be the operation principle and IV characteristics of p n junctions, bipolar junction transistors b j t, metal oxide semiconductor MOS field effect transistor that is MOSFET which you all hear often. Uh, you can use if you like a textbook which is authored by Professor M K Achutan and myself K N Bhatt, Fundamentals of Semiconductor Devices published by Tata Microhill in the year 2007 reprinted uh, in 2008 and 2009. So, it is mainly written for beginners on uh, devices if you are interested you can go through that book. Now, we start our discussion on this uh, uh, p n junction before we go to that we just very briefly go through what is p n what is entire material for those of you who have uh, forgotten about that I am sure all of you have, uh, studied it even in your high school days. So, the silicon is the material that is used for uh, making all these integrated circuits today. It is actually the omnipresent material next to oxygen, it is the most available material on the earth's crust in the form of silicates. You go to beach, you can pick up sand, you can convert it to silicon. Now, the atomic number of silicon is 14, why I am writing that is briefly see tell you about the structure. So, you can you know that from the atomic uh, structure it uh, the, uh, the electrons orbit round this nucleus and in the different shells shell number 1 that is there are 2 electrons shell number 2 there will be 8 electrons shell number 3 if it is full there will be 18 electrons. The formula to remember is n is 1 means it is uh, number of electrons is 2 n squared that is 2 n is 2 means number of electrons is 2 into 2, 4 into 2, uh, 8. So, there are 8 electrons here and this is full, but if you see the third shell there are only 6, uh, 4 electrons whereas, you can take a 18 electrons 3 square into 2 18, but there are 4 only these are th in the outermost shell of the silicon atom that is why they are called valence electrons. They can interact with the neighboring atoms to complete the bond. So, these electrons are called valence electrons, they form covalent bond with four neighboring atoms. There are different types of bonds, there is one type of bond where they share electrons between the two atoms that is called covalent bond to form diamond like crystal structure. This is the two dimensional picture of that crystal structure. I do not want to draw three dimensional structure complicated. So, a very simple picture which is found in very rare in textbooks is this. These are the all these circles are the atoms. You see I have put as 4 plus that means that the core has got plus charge 4 and 4 valence electrons are there around that 1, 2, 3, 4 these dashed lines. So, you can see that this electron belongs to this atom that is nearby and you can see one more dashed line is the electron belonging to this atom. So, actually these two electrons move around both the atoms so as to hold them together that is called covalent bond. You can see each atom contributes to one bond. So, the, these two neighbors one bond one electron here one electron here forming a bond like that. So, if there are four electrons the bond is complete. If any of these electrons is missing that is a vacancy. Okay. Now, at 0 degrees Kelvin the electrons will have uh, no energy to come out of this bond. So, the electron density will be 0 and silicon will actually behave like an insulator at 0 degrees Kelvin. Okay. So, but if you go to room uh, the uh, room temperature see what I showed you is the intrinsic silicon in the sense there are no dope no impurities purely it is silicon. Now, this intrinsic silicon at room temperature what happens is some of these bonds for example, you can see there is one electron is missing from this there are two usually in each bond one of them is missing here because that electron has broken come out of the bond and is made free. It has acquired the energy from the temperature 
because the crystal is at room temperature. So, at 0 degree Kelvin this electron was sitting all in the bond no free electron. Now, this electron will come out that way number of electrons will break bonds there are 5 into 10 to the power of 22 silicon atoms per centimeter cube many of them will break bond many of these electrons okay, from this bond will come out and will be free. So, those are the n is the number of electrons per centimeter cubed. Okay. So, as you break one bond here you can see one electron is formed leaving behind one vacancy there. So, it is as if that region is plus charge put together this neutral, but when the electron comes out of that it leaves a plus charge there. So, this plus charge also can move because electrons from here can jump to that from the neighbor can jump and move there. So, this vacancy which behaves like a plus charge can move from here to here. In other words in silicon or in semiconductors you have got two types of charges in metals you have got only electrons in semiconductors you have got electrons and these vacancies which behave like a positive charges. So, there are negative charges called electrons positive charge called holes a symbol used is p for holes p type p for positive holes n for negative that is electrons positive charge and negative charge in intrinsic material whenever one electron is created it leaves behind one hole that means number of electrons is equal to number of holes p is equal to n. Now, one qu quick question on this we have to answer is due to temperature there is continuous breaking of covalent bonds that means continuously electrons and holes pairs are created in pairs for one electron there is one hole created, created that is for one negative charge one plus charge is created both are mobile. Okay. But given a chance that electron will go back to this vacancy and occupy that position when it goes back to that uh, vacancy what happens is electron has merged with the hole negative and plus charge both combined together that is recombined that is called recombination. It if it recombines both electron and holes disappear because the electron which has come out from here if it goes back and occupies that position there is no more electron no more hole. So, what happens is as you keep on keeping the temperature on both have whole electron pairs will be created simultaneously there will be recombination rate also where they will be killing each other. Okay. So, at steady state the hole density is equal to electron density okay. that is generation rate rate at which carriers are generated matches with the recombination rate. It is like if you take a uh, take I show this uh, bottle okay, and you can see if I make number of holes here around this bottle number of holes and if I keep filling this with water at a certain rate that is the generation rate it will keep on filling and it will stabilize at a particular value if I continue to pour there are holes through that hole that it will be coming out when the rate at which I am pouring is exactly equal to the rate at which is coming out through the holes that level will stabilize that is the steady state. So, that is what is happening here where rate at which whole electron pairs are created is equal to rate at which it is, it is recombining the rate at which this water is coming out of this uh, uh, class. Okay. So, under steady state conditions for a uh, for a uh, intrinsic material pure material hole concentration equal to electron concentration you call it as n i which is for silicon it is 1.5 into 10 to power 10, to power 10 per centimeter cube. Okay. So, that there is a cube here centimeter cube at t equal to 300 degree centigrade. If it is uh, uh, germanium that will be much larger it is about 2.5 into 10 to the power 13 per centimeter cube. If it is gallium it is more difficult to break the bonds therefore, the density will be about 10 to the power of 6 per centimeter cube with that intrinsic material. Now, you can see silicon there are only 10 to the power 10 electron hole pairs per centimeter cube. The resistivity of this material will be very high it will be about uh, 300,000 ohm centimeters. So, you want to have control over this resistivity you should be able to change the resistivity. How do you do that? You add impurities to that like this. For example, to that lattice what we saw I add 
phosphorus which is actually fifth group element in the, uh, in the periodic table. It is a fifth group element and its atomic number is 15. You see silicon was atomic number was 14. There are four free electrons, four valence electrons whereas, phosphorus is 15 that means, there are five valence electrons. If this atom is sitting there where the silicon atom is supposed to be sitting, it can contribute five electrons. But, but there are only four sites 1, 2, 3, 4 sites to form the bond. The fifth electron does not have a chance to form the bond. So, it is hovering around that with a larger radius and it is still around that this is the orbit of that particular fifth electron which would mean that it is very loosely bound to this parent atom. It can be knocked out with very small energy like 50 milli electron volts. That means, even at room temperature, this particular electron will be available as a free electron. So, what it implies is when I introduce one phosphorus atom into the lattice, it releases one free electron to the lattice. That is, it donates one free electron, that is why it is called as a donor atom. And the donor density, you call it as N d. If there are 10 to the power of 15 phosphorus atoms which you have donated, it will donate. It will donate 10 to the power of 15 electrons to the crystal. So, what was originally 10 to the power of 10 holes and 10 to the power of 10 electrons now becomes 10 to the power of 15 electrons, but the hole density will die down dr drastically because many of these uh, electrons will participate in killing those holes recombining in the, with the holes. The thumb rule is that the p n product is n i squared, n i is 1.5 in 10 to the power of 10. So, n i squared is 2.25 in 10 to the power of 20. So, if I have donors which are 10 to the power of 15, n is equal to 10 to the power of 15. So, p will be 2.25 in 10 to the power of 15, uh, 20 divided by 10 to the power of 15. That means, whole concentration will be about 10 to the power of 5 only. So, now notice I have introduced 10 to the power of 15, 10 to the power of 15 phosphorus atoms which has donated 10 to the power of 15 electrons to the crystal per centimeter cubed which has reduced the hole density to about 10 to the power of 5. So, you have got now two types of carriers, one of them is majority carrier that is electrons 10 to the power of 15 per centimeter cubed, the other one is minority carriers they are holes p type uh, p uh, denoted by p. So, this is the conductivity is controlled by mostly by the electrons n type. So, this semiconductor where electrons are the majority carriers is called n type material. Current flow is mainly controlled by the electrons negative charges. Okay. So, that is the basic thing to understand what I put here is n d plus because if one electron if all the five electrons are there around this nucleus that is neutral, but if one of those electrons is removed away from that the nucleus is charged with plus one charge not plus five plus five is the nucleus charge when five electrons are around it is neutral, but one electron if you remove it has plus charge of 1. Please remember that. If it has moved away from that atom far away, there is a net plus charge there uh, around that. Please remember that when you go to p n junction. So, there is n type material. Now, the p type material. See, instead of introducing phosphorus which is uh, atomic number is 15, valence electron 5, I introduce boron. Boron is a uh, third group element in the periodic table and its atomic number is 5, which would mean that there will be 5 well, uh, that mean atomic number is uh, 5 and since it is in third group there will be 3 valence electrons. See in the previous case it was fifth group it had 5 valence electrons, third group has got 3 valence electrons. Now, if it is sitting in the lattice here, say I have put plus 3 here that is 3 valence electrons are there. So, when the 3 valence electrons are there and they are the only one which are available for participation, there is no electron just available for forming this bond here. Okay. So, if that is a situation, it is charge neutral, but now what happens is there will be a vacancy here okay, because only 3 electrons are available with the boron which is valence. Uh, which has uh, uh, belongs third group. So, these three electrons are occupying the 
bond, but the fourth one there is no electron. So, what it does is it takes an electron from the neighboring bond and it moves into that portion, it jumps from there to there. What happens now? This region when it has accepted electrons, it has become negatively charged. When there is no electron accepted into that atom, it is neutral. If it has accepted an electron, it is negatively charged. What has happened as a result? It has left behind a plus charge here. That means, it has created, yeah, it has satisfied this bond by moving this negative charge from here to here and making this negatively charged, but a plus charge is there. But this is not mobile here once it is bound. So, here there is a plus charge that is a hole or a vacancy which can move from one bond to another jump. Because for example, let us say an electron from here jumps into this vacancy. What has happened is in effect is this vacancy has moved there. That means, the plus charge has moved from here to here. The difference between the charge movement is in the previous case the free electron okay, is a free electron can move through the crystal very freely. Of course, there will be collisions, but this, this movement of this plus charge is also movement of electrons. It is movement of electrons jumping from here to here and here to here. So, this plus charge has moved here due to movement of electron, but it is not a free movement, it is a jump movement. So, it has to break this bond and go to this position. Okay. So, the movement of these plus charges which are holes is rather restricted, not as free as free electrons. As a result, the velocity of these plus charges which you call it as holes are less compared to those of electrons. Okay. So, usually that is why they prefer to make uh, devices with electrons uh, as transport carriers rather than holes because they are rather slow. Higher speed devices usually involve electrons. Okay. But you need also p type materials. So, in this case positive charges are the ones which are available for conduction plus charges that is why you call it as p type silicon. And you can see if I introduce 10 to the power of 15 boron atoms, it introduces 10 to the power of 15 vacancies that is 10 to the power of 15 plus charges. So, 10 to the power of 15 holes per centimeter cube. So, hole concentration will be equal to this is ionized means electron which has been accepted equal to the boron that you have introduced per centimeter cube hole concentration. Now, the when the moment the hole concentration has been reduced to 10 to the power 15 or 10 to the power 16, the electron concentration comes, comes down decided by this relationship. P n product remains the same. I am not getting down into the theory of that. So, product remains the same, the whole thing is because of recombination large number of electron holes are present. So, electron concentration comes down. If this is 10 to the power of 15 per centimeter cube, electron concentration will come down to 10 to the power of 5 into 2 into 2.5. So, electrons are minority here, holes are majority here. Okay. So, with that introduction, now you have got seen n type material, p type material, intrinsic material. Nobody uses in intrinsic state of acidities. Usually, they will use either p type or n type and most of the time it is used in combination like this. You take p type material and n type material, if you take the entire region of the material, for example, if you take this entire region of the p type material is neutral, it has here and there plus charges, but corresponding plus charge there is a negative charge there. Totally it is neutral. Now, if I take this region as the boundary between the p type and the n type material, this is the p n junction 0 where I have put okay, the p n junction. At the instant of forming the junction, you recall the entire region is n type. The entire region has about 10 to the power of 15 electrons per centimeter cube. Okay. Now, if any of the electrons move away from that from this region that leaves behind plus charge one charge, because for one donor electron if the electron is present near the donor it is charge neutral, but if it moves away 
it leaves behind 1 plus charge. Please remember that. So, now when the, at the instant when the, this layer junction is formed by bonding or whatever mechanism, large density of electrons are present to the right side of the 0, 10 to the power of 15 electrons per centimeter cubed. To the left side of the 0, it is large density of holes are present, but the electron concentration is very low, 10 to the power of 5 per centimeter cubed. Okay. So, just across this boundary, there is a concentration gradient of electrons from this side to this side. Similarly, if I come from left to, to right, large number of holes are plus charges are present, mobile plus charge are present and there is a concentration gradient of holes. Now, let us talk of one of them. So, on the right hand side, there are large number of electrons, whole thing was star neutral, but because of concentration gradient, the electrons will move by a mechanism known as diffusion. Okay. The driving force is the concentration gradient. To understand what is meant by diffusion, you take uh, we take a very good uh, physical example. If I take the again this bottle, okay, I open the bottle and uh, introduce by means of a filler, just put some ink at the bottom of the, this is the water top level. At the bottom, I put one to one or two drops of ink so that I can see the color. I take out without disturbing the water. The ink will remain at the bottom, but if I leave it there for some time, the ink comes up and occupies the entire portion. How has it come up? If it is going down, you will say that maybe it is gravity, but in this case, the ink has come up. What was the driving force? Driving force was ink is present at the bottom, no ink here the driving force for the concentration gradient. This is the law of nature. If there is concentration gradient, if things can move, it will move. Okay? If they are free to move, if it has enough energy to move. Now, the atoms will not move. If there is large number of donor atoms are there on to the side, right side, they will not move because they require lot of energy to move. You can move them if you give lot of energy by heating the crystal to about 1000 degrees centigrade, then they can move. But the electrons which are present here can move because of concentration gradient even at room temperature because they can they are free to move. So, what happens is the bond junction is formed because of the concentration gradient from the right side to the left side. The electrons will move. The moment electrons move from right side to left side, what is left on the right side? Originally, it was charge neutral. Now, if electrons have moved out, it leaves behind plus charges which are the core of the nucleus. You may recall the phosphorus atom is neutral if the electron is around that, if one electron moves out it leaves behind one plus charge which is core. That plus charge is fixed charge it would not move because it is atom, it is very heavy electrons move on that side. So, right side there is plus charge it leaves behind the core which will not move. Next left side is negatively charged because of movement of these electrons. Similarly, because of the whole concentration, the plus, plus mobile holes will move on, vacancies will move to the right, that again charges the right side to plus, leaving negative charges. So, net effect is there will be immobile plus charges here on the right hand side because of movement of electrons from right to left. There will be immobile negative charges on left because the plus mobile holes can move to the right. So, if the doping concentrations are equal, the width of this region and width of this region will be same. This is called the depletion layer because it is depleted of mobile carriers. It is called depleted layer or space charge layer. Okay, what is the consequence of this? The consequence of this is plus charges are present here, negative charges are present here. Field lines will originate on this plus charge and terminate on negative charges. There will be electric field from this side to this side all the charges originating on the right side will go through the center portion. So, there will be peak electric field here and there will be zero electric field at this boundary. So, electric field direction is from right to left, okay. from the right to left that is electric field direction. Now, the magnitude of this depends upon the amount of charge that is present here which depends upon the doping concentrations. Okay. So, what is the consequence of this? If this electric field were not present, what would happen? The 
transfer of electrons from right to left would have gone on infinitely. But because of the transfer of charge, there is electric field, and because of the electric field, there is a potential difference between this point and this point. Plus charge on the right side, left right, right on the left hand side. So, if I go from this left hand side from here to here, that is from minus W p to plus W n, n is the n region, W is the width of that region. If I go from here to here, there will be potential rise, electrostatic potential will go up because plus charges are on the right hand side. Okay. How much is the potential depends upon how much is the electric field. If it is uniform, you will say electric field into distance gives you the voltage, but it is not uniform, it is varying field, but there will be a built in potential. So, this is called the built in potential. Okay. What is the consequence of this built in potential V B i or contact potential V C P both terminals are used inter interchangeably. What is the consequence of this? The consequence of this is uh, that electrons tend to move from right side to left to because of concentration gradient. Now, notice the electric field has built up here from right side to left side because of transfer of electrons leaving behind plus charges on the right side okay, and making this side negatively charged. Now, these negative charges have built up so much that this electric field in this direction prevents any further this movement of the electrons from right side to left side. So, the voltage that has developed here or the electric field that has developed here reaches such a value that that field and that potential is sufficiently large to prevent any further transfer of electrons from right hand side to left hand side. See, there are two forces coming into picture one is the concentration gradient which pushes the electrons from right to left, other one is the electric field from right to left which will actually keep the electrons pushed to the right. Okay. So, if you say the electric field pushes the electrons from neg negative side to the positive side, okay. electric field pushes the electrons from the negative side to the positive side. Whereas, the concentration gradient pushes the electrons from right to left. Okay. So, the electric field now is sufficiently large, so that the movement from right to left is exactly balanced from movement from left to right. Same thing is holding for good for the holes. Let us talk of holes. I have there will be a forward current from left to right continuously if there are continuous flow of holes from left to right that I marked as I f. But because of this field in this direction, okay, there will be reverse flow of holes in that direction. This is one way of looking into that. Ultimately, there is no flow. What you say is forward flow and reverse flow are balanced equally each other. So, what you say is because of this uh, concentration gradient I f, I marked with this arrow here I f, there will be flow of holes from left to, to right okay, concentration gradient, but on the right hand side there are minority holes you remember if there are 10 to the power of 15 electrons there are 10 to the power of 5 holes per centimeter cube they are present here minority and from here to here there is a electric field in this direction. So, those minority holes will move from right hand side to left hand side that is exactly the electric field is sufficiently large. So, that the transfer of minority holes from right hand side to left hand side can balance exactly if the transfer of holes from left hand side to the right hand side which is due to the concentration gradient. So, the current is 0. So, if you look at the barrier here okay, uh, the what the holes moving from right hand side to left hand side is enjoy moving down the potential hill. If you keep a hole here at the tip of this hill, it will just roll down the potential hill. Okay. See, for example, if I have a slope like this, if I bring a particle here, it will roll down that. Whether this is increased or reduced, so long as there is a slope there, it will move down. So, that is what is happening. 
the holes present on the right hand side are there minority areas which are due to thermal generation. So, long as there is temperature number will be decided at room temperature is 10 to the power of 5 per centimeter cube. If I increase the temperature the whole concentration will increase number rolling down will increase. So, this is actually uh, the transfer of electrons due to the due to the electric field or rolling down the potential hill independent of the slope. Now, from the left hand side to the right hand side if the hole has to come from this side to this side it has to have enough energy to go up the barrier. Okay. That will always be present due to the ambient temperature the electrons the holes will be distributed up to certain height some of them will have enough energy to cross the barrier. Suppose I increase this barrier the holes has to go up the larger barrier. So, then if I increase the barrier the holes crossing from left hand side to right hand side will be reduced the less number of them will be able to cross. If I reduce the barrier the barrier height is reduced more will be able to cross the barrier. So, the moral of the story is what flows from right hand side to left side depends only on temperature irrespective of the height it will be constant, but what flows from left hand side to right hand side will depend upon the barrier. If I reduce the barrier more will flow to the right if I increase the barrier it will completely cut down what can go from left to right. So, that is the thing that we are going to see now. So, we will concentrate only one charge because same thing happens to the electrons also. So, here the I f is due to those which are crossing able to cross from left hand side to right hand side I r is those which are crossing from right hand side to le left hand side rolling down the barrier. Okay. Now, I f is equal to I r 0 current no voltage applied. Let us go back and now see what happens if I apply if I increase this barrier how do I increase this barrier make this side more right side more positive compared to the negative side. How do I do that? I apply voltage across this junction with this n side more positive compared to the p side, p side. So, that is like this. So, I have made p side plus I applied external voltage V c which you can call it also V r you call it as a reverse bias you call it reverse bias because you have increased what was original height was V c p or V b i. Now, you have applied made this side more positive by applying external voltage V r or V c. So, that this barrier height is no longer V c p it is increased from V c p to V c p plus V r. Okay. So, what is the result of that? Remember the holes which are present minority carrier on the n side they are fixed by the temperature. So, and number available here on the right hand side is fixed. Now, also this plane the inclination the slope of this only has increased the height has increased, but whatever is there down this plane it can roll down this potential hill very comfortably whether it is V c p or V c plus V r. So, number rolling down there from here that is I r see remember when you went behind earlier the I r I marked with this size this also this same size here I r is remaining the same thing because number crossing from right hand side to left hand side remaining the same thing for a given temperature, but if I increase the temperature that will go up remember that and this I r is usually called as I naught which you can call it as a reverse saturation current because when you in this bias condition this I r remains the same thing what happens to I f previously I f was equal to I r. Now, because you increase this barrier <coughs> okay, the holes which are present are here at this level originally some of them had energy more than this this height. So, they were able to cross giving rise to I f comparable to I r, but now since the barrier height is increased <coughs> okay, the how much energy level these electrons have depends upon the temperature that is fixed. So, they can come only up to some level they cannot cross this barrier. So, that I f comes reduces and becomes 0. So, now you can see when you have this bias plus on the right hand side <coughs> okay, that is called reverse bias because you are cutting down this I f and allowing only the I r to be present which is a constant for a given temperature. So, I f I is equal to 
i f minus i r in that direction in this direction i f is 0 i r I put negative because I am marking the current in that direction. If you call in this n to p that is positive p to n if you consider it is negative. So, to avoid confusion you will say that i naught will be from n to p. Please remember now by any chance if you are able to bring alert bring the plus charges near this potential barrier if I increase that concentration either by giving either by increasing the temperature or by a mechanism which will break these covalent bonds that is by shining light then this I naught will go up. In fact, in the solar cell you do that you shine light so that you generate carriers current can be collected. Okay. So, this is the reverse uh, current will be constant I naught decided by temperature. Okay, now, let me see if I may instead of making this n side more positive, I will make p side more positive. In the sense, originally it was V c p with the plus here minus here, I apply opposite polarity that is p side positive and side negative like this plus on the p side. So, originally it was V c p like this with plus here minus here, I apply plus here minus here which adds on to that. So, the voltage V e is applied therefore, the barrier height is reduced from V c p by V e. So, barrier height is V c p minus V e. What is the implication of that? What will happen to the I r? I r as I told you depend upon only number which is present here whether this plane this is reduced that is if that is reduced like that like that if it is like this or like this now you have reduced it whatever particles I put here it will roll down whether it is like this or like that. So, that I r is not changing that is remaining constant even in this bias, but the carriers which are here I originally they had to climb up this barrier from left to right plus charges, but now you have reduced the barrier by applying this bias you call it as forward bias because it enables more of these charges because they cross from this side to this side because the barrier height is reduced from this height to this height by an amount V e. So, more charges are able to cross and the charges which can cross exponentially depends upon the applied voltage or the barrier. So, what you can say is without deriving that the current flow which originally was both I f forward and reverse were I naught the reverse is I naught now this current, but I f <coughs> has gone up by a factor e to the power of e by B t. Originally you can see here <coughs> here thermal equilibrium condition no applied voltage I f and I r both were equal to I naught. Uh, when the reverse bias I f went down to 0 and the current flow in that direction I r is I naught but when a forward bias I naught is remaining the same thing, but I f has gone up by a factor e to the power of v e by v t that is I naught into e power v by t. So, in this direction you have got I naught into e to the power v by v t and in the other direction that I naught is always present. So, net current flow from p to n is I naught into e to the power v by v t from here to here and right to left is I naught that is the current flow here. Okay. So, this all what I have written here barrier height is reduced from V c p to V c p minus V r uh, in fact uh, uh, V c p minus V e in this case uh, uh, and I f increases exponentially with V and becomes very large and I r does not change and I f increases by that whatever I have told is written here. Okay. Now, that completes my discussion on forward bias reverse bias. Let us now take a look at the characteristics quickly. Okay. <coughs> so, please remember forward bias that is the characteristic which goes up exponentially, reverse bias it is a constant current from right to left, but in both cases the net current flow is from the positive side of the battery towards the negative side of the battery easy to remember. The reverse bias 
from positive side it comes like that in the device it is entropy forward direction net current is from positive side to negative side because the driving force is the battery. So, it has got to be from positive to negative. Okay. Other thing that you must remember is when I go to transistor action, if I increase the holes minority carriers here that current will increase okay. and reverse bias when I reverse bias current flow is will increase if I increase that, that hole concentration. Here when a forward bias what happens to the hole concentration is injected from is raised here because you are injecting holes from right hand side to the left hand uh, left hand side to right hand side large concentration are there they ultimately recombine ok. Now, remember this. So, minority carriers are injected from this majority holes from here to here in the forward bias and if I have a p side on this side that can collect those holes. So, for example, here if I had a injecting if I inject holes here if I raise the hole concentration here that can flow from here to here that we will see later ok. So, now the IV characteristics forward bias i is equal to i naught e to power v by v t minus 1 that is the characteristics at room temperature T 1 exponentially increasing and forward bias reverse bias I reverse this polarity v is negative. So, e to the power minus v by v t v t is about 25 milli electron milli volts v, v t is actually k t by q k is Boltzmann constant t is temperature q is electronic charge. So, that v t called thermal voltage is about 25.8 milli volts ok. So, if this is uh, e to the power of minus 100 by 25 that is e to the power of minus 4 that is very small compared to 1. So, if you apply 100 milli volts in that direction this term is negligible and the current is in the opposite direction that is the reverse bias. So, and that saturates I naught. So, you can see that forward bias current increases exponentially reverse bias current saturates at T 1. If I raise the temperature I naught goes up because the whole concentration goes up my naught is here. If I increase the temperature the carrier concentration here goes up. So, more current flow from more whole plus charge flow from n to p more current more reverse current. So, you can see the T 1 to T 2 current goes up that is I naught goes up if I naught goes up the entire thing goes up in the forward direction. So, both go up in this direction for a given forward voltage the current keeps on increasing in the forward direction for a given reverse direction the current also increases as go on increasing the temperature ok. So, this is the I V characteristic now this rise in temperature for example, if I take reverse current for every 10 degree centigrade uh, I am sorry just here you can see uh, the reverse current doubles for every 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature ok. Here this doubles for every 10 degrees centigrade rise in temperature whereas, for a given constant current if you go along this line the forward voltage drop from T 1 to T 2 you can see that voltage drop falls T 2 to T 3 the forward voltage drops for the same current and this rate at which it falls is about 25 milli volts the drop will be 25 milli volts for each degree centigrade rise in temperature ok. So, that is the uh, very useful parameter in the sense you can use the diode as a for uh, temperature sensing when forward bias diode is kept constant you can measure the voltage drop across the thing as a function of temperature. So, you can calibrate it by noting that the forward voltage drops by 25 milli volts for each uh, rise in degree temp, uh, degree centigrade rise in temperature. So, this is actually the full characteristic <coughs> forward characteristics reverse characteristics this is I naught this is I naught into power V by V t. If you go to very high voltages in the reverse direction see here 
the voltage prevents the current flow because the carriers present are very small minority carriers. But if I go to very large voltages, <coughs> okay, the uh, current will shoot up because there will be large number of whole electron pairs created because of a mechanism called avalanche breakdown or Zener breakdown. Zener breakdown you can understand very easily. You have the crystal subjected to the electric field stress and you are pulling that electrons and plus charges away from the electrons away from the uh, lattice atom. So, it creates large number of electrons because they break down break away from this lattice atom leaving behind plus mobile charges. Both these electrons and holes are mobile they give rise to large current flow. So, in, to put it in nutshell very large voltages will allow generation of large number of electron hole pairs which will give rise to large current flow which will be actually in the same direction as the reverse current flow. Always supply has to come from the battery. Okay. Now, you can actually see the uh, characteristic for different uh, materials. For example, if I take germanium the characteristic is like this like this is a forward this is a reverse telling you that I naught is very large for germanium because it is very easy to break the bonds in germanium I naught is very large intrinsic carry concentration is 10 to power 13 of that order whereas silicon it is difficult more difficult to break the covalent bond by for at a given temperature. So, I naught is smaller than that and I naught is small you can see I also will be small for a given for a given voltage I naught will be I forward current also is small for a given voltage this current is small. That means, you have to apply more voltage to have the this current flow here. Gallium arsenide it is red color here and I naught is even smaller. So, you can see the cutting voltage if you want to people talk of cutting voltage where uh, at least one tenth of the designed current current normally allowed close to that silicon about 0 0.6 to 0 0.65 volts cutting voltage sufficient amount of current will flow in the forward direction in silicon when it is about point, point, uh, 0.65 volts. Germanium by about 0.2 volts is sufficient if you apply forward bias voltage current will flow. Gallium arsenide you will have to apply about 1 volt to allow current flow sufficiently. Okay. So, you can see the if you have the old radio which was, which was uh, germanium transistor based you cannot replace with silicon uh, transistor because the all the voltage levels are different here. And if silicon device is there you cannot replace with gallium arsenide. So, uh, this is one thing, but now the germanium devices are uh, have been going out of market, but germanium is coming back with a new avatara because of its higher electron velocity compared to silicon it is taking a fresh look in the nano electronics area that we ourselves are doing some work on germanium based field effect transistors. Okay. So, that is coming up people are looking at gallium arsenide because of the better electron mobility compared to silicon germanium also because of better electron mobility, but then why did they leave germanium? They left germanium because of large reverse saturation current and if you you cannot operate those devices junction type of devices at temperature uh, in excess of about 80 degree centigrade because this leak reverse current becomes very large. And the reverse current I naught becomes large both will become almost like an ohmic contact it will not behave like a diode that is why they left it. But there are other ways of sorting out this problem now. So, silicon you can go to even about 150 degree centigrade without worrying about uh, its operation it will still work as a diode. If you go to gallium arsenide even go to 200 250 degree centigrade it will work as a junction. Okay. So, what we will do now is quickly take a look at the bipolar junction and transistor I do not think I can go beyond bipolar junction junction transistor today uh, and we will finish up this junction transistor MOSFET I will take up in my next lecture if I am not able to do today. I have just drawn these diagrams to go from the p n junction to p n p junction. A p n junction has got only one junction. Okay. You can see this is a forward biased junction which injects 
holes from p type region to the n region net current flow is from p to n because of large amount of hole flow from p, p to n very little hole flow from n to p because they are minority there in n type holes are minority so very few so i naught into e to the power of v by bt is the whole current and if you take the current total current there will be minus i naught is there because of hole flow from right to left okay but the point that i am trying to make out is there are lot of holes injected here which ultimately will recombine with the uh, uh, electrons here creating a current electron injection from here to here okay holes when they recombine with electrons electrons are subtracted from here to here into this their majority there so there is a net current flow always like that electron flow in that direction see hole is a plus charge the current flow is the direction is the same as the direction is plus in which plus charge moves. Electron is negative charge. Current flow direction is opposite to the direction in which electron moves. So, electron moves in this direction, the current flow is in that direction. So, here the current flow is in this direction, left to right, but electrons are injected from here to here to neutralize these holes. Okay? That is how the charge transfer is from here to your holes, recombine here, then to convert it to electrons. In the wire, there are only electrons, metal, there are no holes. Okay? It is only here within the semiconductor you talk of holes and electrons. Now, take a look at this reverse bias diode. I just put in opposite way plus minus current flow is I naught n to p, and this flow is because of minority carriers generated here due to thermally generated holes, they are flowing from left to right that gives rise to current in this direction. Now, if as I was iterating, I was telling it a time and again to you that if I have a, a large number of holes here, that will give rise to more current. Now, what I will do is, I will merge this n type region and n type region, so that I have p, n and p and reduce the length of this to a very small width, I put p and p. I reduce this to very small width like 1 micron or 2 microns. 1 micron is 10 to the power of minus 4 centimeter, very small. So, that the holes injected from here to here, they do not re, they do not have sufficient path length to recombine. So, that whatever is injected here can reach this edge. Now, this is a reverse bias junction. Now, remember if there is a hole which is a minority in this region, if it reaches here, okay, this is negative, this is positive, plus to minus, the holes can roll down this potential hill. See here, the holes can roll down from n to p, holes can roll down from n to p. You supply the holes to this from this junction, this junction injects the holes and those holes, because this path length is very small, all of them are made available here, they can roll down the potential hill. So, what you have done is, the forward bias junction is injecting the holes and the reverse bias junction which is kept very close to that collects those holes. So, whatever current is here I e is I e naught e to the power v by v t is the forward current okay, and that most of it reaches here. So, I call it as I e since it is not exactly same thing some of them may get recombined I multiply by factor alpha, alpha times whatever I e is there reaches here, but you can see if I do not have this v applied there is a current due to that I naught, which I call it as I C naught. So, total current to this through this uh, junction is alpha times I e reaching the collector plus the reverse saturation current of this okay. and alpha is very, very close to 1. So, that you can almost write that if I C is I e is 1 milli ampere, alpha is 0 0.999 times 1 milli ampere and I C naught is micro amperes. So, this will mostly will be 1 milli ampere here, 1 milli ampere here. You have transferred it from a forward bias junction to a reverse bias junction. Forward bias junction is a very low resistance junction, the reverse bias junction is a very high resistance junction. So, you transfer the current from a low resistance loop to high resistance loop. That is why it is called transfer resistor, transistor. Go on telling transfer resistor, transfer resistor, transfer resistor, transistor. Okay, you eat out those words. That is what is called junction transistor. Okay. <coughs> so, now, I think I will not have much uh, time, maybe a uh, couple of minutes I will have. 
I will just go through this. Uh, there are two types of transistor PNP transistor and PN. What I have discussed just now is PNP IE injects the holes and IPC hole current connected there E is alpha times IE, IE alpha times IE and IC naught is in that direction. So, the IC is that alpha times IE times that. I can write now you can see current entering, current entering and whatever little recombines comes out of that very little. Okay. So, I C I B is I E minus I C and I can write substituting all this substitute for I E as I C minus I C naught divided by alpha. Okay. I can write I E is that minus I C this sub uh, simpl simplifying I get I B equal to I C times this quantity 1 minus alpha by alpha. You can see 1 minus alpha by alpha is called beta it will ultimately be if this term is negligible is I C by I B that is the current gain of the transistor common emitter current gain of the transistor. Okay. I think beta is alpha. So, you see that if alpha is 0 0.99 1 minus alpha is 0 0.01 beta is 100. Okay. So, that is what you uh, get beta is if it is 0 0.99 it is 100. So, you can see that I C will be 100 times I B if I have micro amperes of base current flowing, I can get milli amperes of current flowing. So, if I inject my signal at the base terminal, I get large amount of current at the character. So, I can use it as an amplifier. Okay. So, I can have NPN transistor or PNP transistor also. Uh, okay. So, this is a PNP transistor that is NPN transistor. In fact, this is exactly same thing what happens is the forward bias junction injects current in that direction emitter current flow is you can see exactly opposite to the PNP transistor collector current also is exactly opposite in the direction base current also is exactly opposite everything is opposite polarity is here emitter is plus base is negative here emitter is minus base is positive exactly opposite equations are same collector current is alpha times I E plus I C naught or Collector current is beta times I B plus beta plus 1 times I C naught. This is the principle of transit traction. With this, I think I will stop. We will discuss the characteristic structure tomorrow.